So of course, I've been using Linux for a while now, for a couple of years. I've used Arch, Debian, Fedora, and many more of the other popular distributions. The thing is, is after some time, after a lot of distro hopping, I realized it's not really the distribution per se, it's more so the desktop environment. Absolutely, there are some differences between the distributions, but at the end of the day, it's just the Linux kernel underneath, and what you can do on one distro, you can pretty much do on any of the other ones. It's the desktop environment where you can really change things up. You can change the look, your workflow, and so much more. Well, one of the most popular desktop environments out there to date is GNOME. Love it or hate it, it's extremely popular, and with GNOME 45 slated to come out later this month, I figured it was a good time to make a video on it. So the first thing that we're going to do is go over some history of GNOME, you know, a little bit of controversy. And then I just wanted to show you how I set up GNOME. We're not going to go into full detail of how I set up a GNOME desktop because I've already got a video that goes into a lot of detail about that. If you want to check that out, it's up here somewhere. Check that out after this video. So the first thing that we're going to do is shoot all the way back to 1997 and have a look at the history of GNOME. But of course, before we do that, if you do like this video, consider hitting that like button because it really helps out the channel way more than you know. So 26 years ago, when I was still shitting my pants, Miguel Diacaza and Federico Mina started the GNOME project. They started as a free software project because they wanted to develop a desktop environment and also have applications that went along with their DE. For those that don't know, DE, of course, stands for Desktop Environment. They started it in 1997, but it would take two years for it to come to fruition, which means in 1999, GNOME 1 was released. See, the reason that they wanted to create GNOME was because at the time, KDE, which was a very big and popular desktop environment, which still to this day is a very popular desktop environment, but see, KDE used the QT widget toolkit, which at the time relied on a proprietary software license. And as you know, GNOME is very strict about being free software. Instead of using Qt, they decided to use GTK for the base of GNOME, which nowadays GTK stands for the GNOME Toolkit. Back then it actually stood for the GIMP Toolkit, the more you know. Now formally, GNOME was a part of the GNU project, which was, or is, I think it's still a thing. It's a mass collaboration that was started by Richard Stallman, the most sane person in the world. Because if you didn't know, there's supposedly a difference between free software and open source software. From what I can tell, the whole the gist of it is that all free software is going to be open source most of the time, but not all open source software has to be free software. Now, you can jump into that rabbit hole if you want to learn more about it. That's about as deep as I'm going to go. As of 2021, GNOME is no longer a part of the GNU project, and it is its own entity. Now, GNOME used to stand for the GNU Network Object Model Environment, and that's why some people pronounce it as GNOME instead of GNOME. Hell, I've even pronounced it GNOME before. It's, I kind of just say it however my brain registers it at the time. So that was GNOME 1. Fast forward to 2002, and GNOME 2 was released. Now, there were a few iterations of GNOME 2, but for the most part, GNOME 2 definitely replicated just your conventional desktop interface. Here's a screenshot of GNOME 2.6. Sorry if the resolution isn't that great. It's kind of tough to find screenshots of these desktop environments since they're so old. And then here's one of GNOME 2.18, which was released on 2007. In 2009, GNOME 2 was actually the default desktop environment for the distribution OpenSolaris. OpenSolaris is now a defunct distribution, but from what I've heard and from forums and posts that I've read, people really liked OpenSolaris whenever it was a thing. But interestingly, if you know the desktop environment Mate, which is a, I'd say it's a fairly popular uh, desktop environment. I'm not going to say that any desktop environment isn't popular in the Linux community because they're all used by people, right? But I would just say that GNOME is right up there on top, being that it is default for a lot of distributions. But Mate, another desktop environment, actually forked itself from GNOME 2. Because I'm sure as you know, or many people know, once GNOME 3 was released, it caused a lot of, uh, a lot of people to get a little upset. So Mate actually forked itself off of GNOME 2. 
they kind of just wanted to keep that, you know, because a lot of people liked GNOME too, and so they wanted to keep that 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 kind of desktop environment going. So they forked it and created Mate. Now GNOME three, because of the lack of direction and just overall progress of the GNOME project, this prompted the introduction of GNOME three. Now it wasn't officially released until two thousand eleven. But this is about the time that the GNOME shell was introduced alongside of GNOME 3. Now, because the Linux community is, is known for complaining a lot, which I get it, sometimes there is merit to it, other times I think it is what it is, but GNOME 3 definitely had a lot of people up in arms. They just didn't like the direction that GNOME was going. I think a lot of it was... Um, I mean, it was kind of an overhaul. If you look at GNOME now, which we're on GNOME 44, um, GNOME 3 was a bit different. That's when the whole GNOME vibe really started to take shape, was in GNOME 3. And some people just didn't really like it. It was a very streamlined and distraction-free workflow. My whole mindset of it is like, if you're not on the front lines helping develop a project or you're not a part of it and you're just using this free software that you get to use for literally no money, why are you complaining? You know, things change and then you just adapt to it. it that's kind of my mindset. So GNOME 3 actually introduced Mutter, which is the default window manager within GNOME. And that's also when the default theme, Adwaita, or however the hell you say it, was introduced. Speaking of Adwaita and the theming and GNOME, the whole GNOME devs, their thought on theming and customization, they're not really about it. They really don't like that shit, which in my opinion, that kind of goes against the whole philosophy of Linux is just having your own system and being able to do what you want with your own system. Now, I made a video a while back kind of shitting on the GNOME devs because they have this website where they're literally, it's a letter to people to basically stop theming the GNOME desktop. Now, I will say that I got a comment on that video basically telling me I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about, which granted, sure, maybe I didn't. And what that commenter said was that the GNOME devs were basically just talking to, you know, like the, uh, the developers of the icon packs and those themes that you can apply to GNOME, like uh, GNOME Look, that website where you can get a bunch of like icon packs and themes. I guess they were talking to them because what they didn't want is for people to apply these themes and then if their system broke, that user to go to the GNOME devs complaining that GNOME wasn't working, right? Which that, I can completely understand that. My whole mindset on that is if you're going to go and if you're a tinkerer, right, and you like to mess around with your system, then it's kind of on you to fix it if anything breaks. But I will say I've customized GNOME a lot. Granted, it's kind of the same theme every single time. I use the same icon packs, the same themes and all that. I've never had it broke because, or I've never had GNOME break because of theming. I've actually never had GNOME break on me before, ever. I still think that although this letter might have been more focused on like the developers of the icon packs and things like that, they're still very, I don't know, they just don't like when people customize their desktop. And it's just kind of weird to me, you know, they really, they want, they have an idea and they have a vision for GNOME. And that's what they think that every GNOME user should use. Or that's how they think every GNOME user should use the GNOME desktop. I don't think the workflow is necessarily amazing. I like GNOME as a desktop environment. I don't mind it. But like I said, I customize mine. I theme mine. I change all of the key bindings because I don't like the way that the default key bindings are. I set up GNOME basically as if I was using a window manager. I set all the same key bindings, at least as many as I can, to replicate a window manager. I've just never personally been able to use any, it's not even GNOME either, any desktop environment, I've never been able to use their default key bindings because I'm so used to using key bindings that I'm used to, right? I mean, if that makes any sense. I think if somebody is going to use GNOME and they're just going to use it default straight out of the box and they get used to all the key bindings and that workflow, I'm sure it could be pretty good. I mean, I don't think there's no, 
I don't really think there is a right or wrong way to have a workflow, right? One person's going to be different than another's and so on and so on. The thing is, is that it's very possible to customize uh, GNOME. I just wish that GNOME would make it a little bit easier. Even if they put a disclaimer out, it was like, hey, look, we'll let you customize GNOME a lot easier now, but if it breaks, don't come bitching to us, which I'm all for that. Because like I said, if you're a tinkerer and you like to mess around with your system, and if you break something, then I think it's your responsibility to fix it, right? Or just fuck it, nuke and pave and start all over. I don't think it's on the GNOME devs to have to listen to people whine and complain if they end up breaking their system. But it would be cool if they just let GNOME be customized a little bit easier instead of having to add a bunch of fucking extensions and third-party icon packs and all that stuff. Just give the people what they want. And maybe a lot of people don't want that, right? Maybe they like the streamlined GNOME experience, but... I'm going to say that there's a lot of people out there that like to customize GNOME as well, and it would be cool if we could just do it, if, if GNOME made it a little bit easier. So because of that, I figured, hey, let's, uh, let's check it out. I've got a virtual machine running with GNOME on it. I've already customized it to my liking, uh, and we're just going to check it out a little bit, you know? So let's jump over to the computer and do that right now. All right, everybody, so this is my GNOME desktop. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go into, like, very deep detail. I have a video that goes through, like, every step that I take to make my GNOME desktop look like this. And if you want to check that out, of course, go ahead and check that out. Um, right now, I just wanted to kind of run through it. I have a quick little list that I wrote down of what app, like, what major applications I use and whatnot. So let's open that up. We'll go here. Open up the terminal. We've got NVIM no maps. And it's not a lot. I don't have a bunch of things written down, but so for the terminal, I of course use the GNOME terminal. Whenever I'm using like a window manager, which I mainly use nowadays, I do use Alacrity. But on GNOME, I just stick with the GNOME terminal because it's a it's a fairly decent terminal. Now console, which I have on here. Now, console has been replaced as the default terminal, but I just don't really like console. There's not much that you can do with it. It doesn't even have a preference tab yet. Now, I did read that coming up with GNOME 45, console is supposed to have a lot more settings and whatnot, so maybe then, you know, it'll have it'll have more settings. Supposedly, it has. it's going to have a preference tab, because as you can see, so this is console right here. If we go here to the GNOME terminal, it does have a preference tab where you can do a bunch of stuff, like you can change the font, you can change the colors, you know, and seeing that I like to theme things, and you can't do that with console, I just don't use it whenever I use GNOME. So, but like I said, in GNOME 45, it's supposed to kind of get revamped, so we'll see what it's like then, but for now, I just use the GNOME terminal. File manager, I of course, I use Thunar, now, I did start to use the regular file manager, just files on GNOME, and it's really not that bad. I, I actually don't mind it, but I've used Thunar from Jump, from like when I first started using Linux, so I just stick with Thunar. My browser, of course, Firefox. I jump between Firefox and Brave on this VM right now. I've just got Firefox, but um, yeah, Firefox, Brave, either one of those. Now, extensions that I use. I only use four extensions. I don't have GNOME loaded up with a, like 20, 30 different extensions uh, just because I don't think that it's needed. But I use Blur My Shell, Hide Activities button because I just don't use that little Activities button that is up there. User Themes, of course, is extremely important if you're trying to theme GNOME. And then also Vitals, which is right here. It's just a list of, you know, system resources and whatnot. I have the disk space, I have the RAM, or how much RAM's being used, and uptime. And then theming, of course, I have Gradients. Now, Gradients is a amazing tool. And Gradients is what I use to actually theme at Waita. Now, I, ha I haven't done it on here like I said in that other video that I made about theming GNOME, you can check that out and I actually go through everything. I don't have it applied on this VM because I just don't really use it. I'm only using it specifically for this video. 
but if you go through here and you change all of these colors it will change the look of Adwaita like if I go down here to we'll just do the um, window colors but I can go here window colors change it to and you can see it actually changes it to the north theme uh, the window colors is for the actual windows header bar colors is of course going to be for the headers so you can go through there what I do is I just open up nordtheme.com and I just basically match these colors to the north theme colors right so this would be like a lighter blue this orange I would change to the nord orange red nord red etc etc and doing that really um, yeah it changes your whole gnome system if you use the files like the uh, regular gnome files that will actually get changed to whatever theme you set it to so you have a very consistent look on gnome with the gradients app all right everybody well that is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed it if you did consider hitting that like button because like i've said it helps out the channel way more than you know also let me know down in the comments do you use gnome do you like it do you hate it do you customize GNOME or do you just use a vanilla GNOME experience? I'd really like to know what you guys use. Um, and I'm, I'm down to communicate. I like to respond to comments actually and actually talk to the people that watch my videos. I'm really trying to, to start a community here, right? Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys use. Even if you don't use GNOME, maybe you use a completely different desktop environment or window manager. Let me know down in the comments and we can talk about it. But, of course, if you have not subscribed, consider subscribing because we have a bunch more content coming your way.